right away on this topic that we are formed in community. That God has not called us to live the Christian life alone. God has not called us to follow Him, to pursue Him alone. But that God has called every single one of us, not just community, but I think probably a better name even in the drug movement. I mean, we are formed in family. Can you say that word family? We all have a family, obviously. We all came from one. And uh, probably all of us would have some experience in family of the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly, right? Now, you're not allowed to point a finger or scream anything out, but probably each of us can tell a lot of stories about the good, the bad, the ugly of our family. I really know I could from our family. I should have brought some pictures uh, and uh, shamed some of them, or myself, really. Um, I won't use names. You know, a lot of my siblings, um, one of our siblings is still famous to this day, nearly 40 years later. When we finish eating and there's a mountain of dishes, suddenly needs to go to the bathroom, disappears from the kitchen, and the second all the dishes are washed, that sibling magically reappears. Hey, how can I help? It's like, you've been gone for 45 minutes while the family's in scrub. I'm gonna tell you it is, they're about 40 years old. They live about two and a half hours north of Medford. <laughs> so, I think God sent me as the baby of the family to torment that older sibling because so we're a 10 year age difference, and they said that when we were kids, uh, when I was a kid, I was always dirty, always sticky, and they don't like that kind of thing. So, this has nothing to do with the message, except for family can be messy, family can be crazy, right? I remember one time secretly using their crazy gaming computer that cost more than all of my earthly possessions combined. And it was actually myself and Lydia, your little sister being probably crazy, eating raw, crunched up top ramen, and uh, literally it's like a bad scene from a movie. Right when the door opens upstairs, we realize we're going to get caught, you know, playing video games on our computer. In trying to get out of there, spilled the raw top ramen into the keyboard of their uh, gaming computer. And as they're coming down the stairs, right, trying to shake it out, praying that they would take some time upstairs to not get caught. I've never confessed that to that older sibling, so you guys just got a public confession. <laughs> Family, right? Family is the best of times, it can be the worst of times, right? It's the most beautiful moments of our life with the people that know us best and deep us and they love us and they care about us. And at the same time, families can probably drive each other crazy at times, right? There can be family fights or family feuds or little things that we do that drive each other crazy. I've only been married for eight months and I'm learning girls live. I came from the man house, the Zoe guy's house, where eight of us men lived in two bedrooms. Life looks a lot different with a wife than in the man house, right? I still cannot get the smell of the man house out of my nostrils. Like, I could recognize that anywhere. I just went back a couple days ago. I love it, guys. I miss the man. Well, I love it. <laughs> My life has improved. I've learned quickly my wife does not like my dirty underwear in all parts of the house. She doesn't, our, our first probably like, hey, can you not do this? It's my wet towel every morning after showering laying on the bed, right? And the other husband and wives have these things that you just do that drive each other crazy. But how many of us know that amidst the fighting or the controversies or the frustrations, we would not trade family for anything, right? I would not want to spare myself the frustrations of family just for something, people that don't get on my nerves, don't drive me crazy. And my prayer this morning as we dive in quickly to God's word, is that if you probably know this, if you're in a joy church, and you probably have lived this and experienced this, that God has called us as the church but our movement, not just to be Christians in the same churches, not just to kind of do business together and then go back to our individual lives, but God has called us to be a family. Our vision, you know, the, the Joy Church executive team was meeting these last couple of days, and probably the number one question is how do we build this movement as we plant churches and send out missionaries, and as it grows, as it should be, how do we do this not as an organization, not just hierarchies, but how do we build the world's best and biggest family, right? And that's our prayer. I pray for each one of us, right? That no matter how good or bad your earthly family is, we're going to see this morning in God's Word that the church is not meant to just be a gathering of strangers and people who don't know each other, but God has called us to be a family. Four simple things. I don't know if it's good hermeneutics to give you the end of the message or homiletics from the beginning, but there's four things I pray this morning. Is that each one of us would commit ourselves radically to the house of God and embrace life in the family. I pray that you would literally say, I want to live and die in the family of God. I don't want 
to just have this contractual relationship. I don't want to treat the church that I come from or this movement as just a restaurant. I come when I want it. I don't when I don't like it. I change flavors and tastes when I have a different inkling or I'm in a different mood. But we would radically embrace God's house and the family of God. That we would love the Lord and His church passionately. That we would love each other as family. And last but not least, that we would grow together in community and the family of God. I'm going to pray real quick and we'll dive in. Lord, we love you. But I thank you for every one of my beautiful brothers and sisters in this room. I am so thankful, God. It fills my heart with joy just being, whether it's no matter what church they're from or wherever we've gathered together. God, I love being a part of this family. I thank you for the blessing, God, of my joy church I come from, but the wider joy church family. I pray, God, from the start that you would keep us as a family. But I pray that there would be no divisions among us, no bitterness, God, no unforgiveness. But as we'll see this morning, those things happen. But I pray you would bind us together in love. Yeah. But I pray for that. I just saw you this morning as I was praying. I just saw supernatural. The Lord wants to bind us together in love. It's a supernatural uniting of hearts. We don't come from the same families. We might not have the same color skin. You might not even come from this country or speak the same language. But I see the Lord uniting our hearts together as a spiritual yeah. family. Yes. So I pray today, Lord, that you do something in us supernaturally. And that God, 50 years, 100 years down the road, we would see the Joy Church just thriving. God, not because we're an organization, not because we gather for around even a mission, we're a family who love each other deeply. Amen. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.